Welcome to Wireless Fundamentals, Session 3, Antennas and Coverage. This lesson will cover various antenna concepts, along with real-world antenna types and how best to use them. Hey, it's, it's dark, dark in here. here. An antenna is a device that radiates RF waves out into the atmosphere in a particular pattern. This is similar to how a light shines outward from a light bulb. Imagine being in a room that is completely dark, except for a single light bulb in the center of the room. This bulb radiates light equally in all directions, creating a perfect sphere of light. If you stood straight up and looked at this light, you would see a so-called elevation view, and it would be in the shape of a perfect circle. If you were to lie down under the light and look up, you would perceive the horizontal view. This too would be a perfect circle. An RF antenna that radiates RF energy equally in all directions is called an isotropic antenna. Since the antenna radiates equally in all directions, you could say that it does not focus energy in any particular direction. Humans cannot make such a device, but we use this theoretical construct as a standard against which to measure the performance of actual, real-world antennas. Imagine the same room as before, but this time a table is added to the bottom of the room, and a reflective hood has been positioned atop the light source. Some of the light energy that used to continue upward is now reflected back down. Since more energy is now reflected downward, the circumference of the circle gets bigger. Imagine placing your hands on the top and bottom of a balloon. If you squish the top and bottom inward, the sides bulge out. This closely mimics many antennas that humans create. The standing man sees a flat spot on the top and bottom of the light pattern. The horizontal man still sees a circle, but that circle is now larger than before. Again, this is because additional energy is being radiated downward, making a larger, brighter light from a horizontal perspective. Antenna manufacturers publish specifications on the patterns the antenna makes in the elevation or E-plane and the pattern the antenna makes in the horizontal or H-plane. When you take energy that used to go in many directions and focus more of it in a single direction, this is called gain. Please understand that an antenna does not actually add power to an AP's RF transmitter. It simply accepts the energy generated by the transmitter and focuses more of it in a particular direction. The more focus, the more gain. Imagine placing your hands on the top of bottom of a balloon and squeezing it just a bit. Of course, the vertical dimension narrows and gets squished in, causing the sides to bulge out. Squeeze a bit harder, and this phenomenon continues. As you decrease the size of the E-plane, the H-plane increases. Pop! Oops, squeeze too hard. There's no analogy for that. I just thought you needed to wake up. Anyway, this is how antennas work. They add gain by focusing the signal. This boosts signal strength along the focused propagation path at the cost of weakening it in all other directions. The amount of gain is compared against the theoretical isotropic antenna we just discussed, which has zero focus or zero gain. The unit of measure is called decibels isotropic, or DBI. Generally, a decibel is a way of comparing some measured actual value against some standard. In this case, we compare an antenna's gain against that of an isotropic antenna. More on this later. What is most important is that you understand these antenna coverage patterns. This will enable you to, to select the right antenna for a given environment or to correlate symptoms in a given scenario to a particular issue with antenna selection, placement, or orientation.
Let's do a brief review of these concepts before continuing. Please answer the following questions and submit. Then use the Continue button to move forward. Think about the word omni. An omniscient person is one who knows everything. An omnipotent person is one who can do everything. An omnidirectional antenna is one that transmits energy in all directions. By definition, the H-plane of an omnidirectional antenna is always shaped very close to a perfect circle. Wait a minute, Vivek. You just told me that antennas can't radiate energy in a perfect sphere. That's right, they cannot. Omni antenna can only radiate fairly close to a perfect circle in the H plane. The E plane is squished, like the balloon in our previous example. So, a low gain antenna is like a balloon that is only squashed a little bit. There is a bit of a flat spot on the top and bottom, and the sides are only slightly larger than that of an isotropic antenna. The lowest gain antenna commonly in use are called dipole or rubber ducky antenna. They have a gain of about 2.15 dBi. By the way, some manufacturers measure antenna gain in dBd or gain as compared to a dipole antenna. Simply add 2.15 to the dBi specification and you have dBd. Subtract 2.15 from a manufacturer's DBD specification, and you have DBI. In the bottom example, someone is really pressing hard on our balloon. This is like a high-gain antenna design. We cover more floor space in the vertical direction, but the top and bottom has really been flattened. There are some high-gain omnidirectional antennas that have 5, 6, or even 14 DBI of gain. With that much gain, the RF energy might not even reach the floor in a high ceiling warehouse or auditorium. But Vivek, most of our business offices are standard ceiling height. Why can't we use high gain antennas to cover more floor space? Then we'd have to buy fewer APs and maybe make our users happier. You are really thinking about our discussion. That's great. But let's dig a bit deeper on this. Many APs have built-in internal omnidirectional antennas included in the price of the AP. External antennae add cost, especially the high-gain variety. Yes, they do cover more floor space, but that is often more of a liability than an advantage. This is because more floor space means more users per AP, and remember, only one user can transmit at a time. A low-cost Low gain antenna may cover an area that includes 15 to 20 users. If 20 users are connected at 18 megabits per second, the actual throughput is 9 megabits per second. All 20 users share that 9 megabit per second bandwidth. A high cost, high gain antenna may cover an area that includes 40 to 50 users. Do you want 50 users sharing 9 megabits per second of bandwidth? In most cases, the answer is probably not. If we care about end-user performance and satisfaction, it is usually best to deploy APs with low to medium gain internal antennas. Plus, it reduces capital expenditures for our company. How often does a less expensive option provide us with better performance? In addition to omnidirectional antenna options, we also have directional antennas. These are sometimes referred to as patch or sector antennas, since the H-plane only covers a sector or patch of floor space. The E-plane has a similar pattern. The antenna is designed to direct most of its energy in a given direction, like the one you see in the figure. Since most of the energy is directed forward, the coverage pattern reaches farther than a comparable omni-antenna. The more focused the beam width, the farther it travels, again, like an adjustable flashlight. Some modern antennas can achieve very narrowly focused beams, even better than the 20 degree example you see here. 
you recall that non-802.11n capable APs, or those that only support 802.11 ABG, only use a single antenna at a time. If multiple signals converge on antenna A, the resultant distortion is detected by the AP. It chooses to use antenna B for this communication to improve the signal. A so-called diversity antenna is one that has been designed to mitigate this multipath distortion. It often is a single package containing two separate antennae with separate cable connector assemblies protruding out to be connected to the AP. The antennas are often a precise distance apart based on the wavelength of the signal. Hey wait, what's wavelength? Well, we talked about frequency, how often a wave transitions up and down. Wavelength is simply how much linear space through the air it takes for the wave to complete a single cycle. If you could see a single 2.4 gigahertz wave, it would take about 4.92 inches or 0.125 meters for the signal to start at zero, peak, valley, and return to zero. Spacing the two antennae this far apart helps to maximize the effectiveness of the diversity antenna. A 5 gigahertz wavelength is about half of that, or about two and a half inches. In other words, wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. Look at the questions you see before you. These are all good questions. Now that we have a decent understanding of antenna coverage patterns, let's apply that knowledge to some actual deployment scenarios. Because you ask such good questions, We've already discussed how the internal integrated antennas in some APs can offer a better value for most indoor WLAN installations. As you recall, this is primarily due to user density issues. Look at this drawing, which compares a typical office environment to a possible warehouse. The APs are mounted at or near the ceiling, and the AP coverage pattern is shown in the large colored circles. A typical office might have 10 to 20 users in a coverage cell. By the way, this can vary greatly. More on this soon. The employees use typical internet access and business applications. This would be considered a normal or typical or medium density and medium bandwidth utilization environment. However, you may have an indoor warehouse environment or outdoor parking lot area that requires WLAN coverage. Perhaps there are only 10 to 20 users working in the entire warehouse. The user density is very low and perhaps we are only concerned with a barcode reading application that uses very little bandwidth. In this scenario you might be able to save money by using high gain antennae and spacing your APs farther apart. So I need to understand how dense the users are clustered and what applications they are using to really understand how large my cells should be. Couldn't have said it better myself. Let's look at some other scenarios. Omni antennas are nearly always the best choice for most indoor applications, such as office space, hotels, and hospitals. The integrated Omni antennas in most HP access points provide a great coverage pattern and installation is easy. APs are often mounted on the T-bar structure of a suspended drop ceiling facing downward. For typical indoor environments, they fit the need perfectly. Some may be tempted to use a directional antenna for such an indoor application. These antenna tend to be more expensive than an integrated Omni. Also, the deployment of these antenna requires more time, attention, and expertise. Panning the antenna orientation left to right and tilting it up and down can cause significant changes in coverage. Installers must play with this orientation until they get it right, checking each orientation with specialized tools, which we'll discuss later. If the antenna gets bumped or moved, the coverage pattern changes. It is simply not worth the effort, especially given that it doesn't suit the need as well as a simple integrated Omni. Remember the problem-solving principle of Occam's razor. The simplest solution is often the best. Directional antennae 
are well suited to covering an outdoor area. We mount the APs inside the building out of the weather. We run the connecting antenna cables out through the building to the sector antenna mounted on the side of the building, pointing out into the parking area. These are typically low user density solutions. Covering as much area as possible is important here. If the coverage doesn't reach far enough, expensive structures may need to be built, special weatherproof enclosures purchased, and special equipment rented to mount APs and antenna out in the middle of the lot. This is very costly. Far better to spend a bit more on a high gain sector antenna that can blast RF energy farther out into the parking lot. You may run into a unique situation that requires a unique thinker. Be that thinker. Don't think rigidly, this antenna should be used for this situation. Understand and reflect upon antenna coverage patterns and think, how can I get the coverage I need? For example, the entryway to an office building might have a large open atrium with very high ceilings. The APs you have all have integrated omni antennas and they don't reach the floor. A sector antenna seems perfect for this application and it might very well be. However, you don't have a sector antenna, but what you do have is a deadline. Get it done. Try installing one of your standard APs with integrated antennas and rotate it 90 degrees from its normal orientation. Maybe it will reach the floor, cover the area, and you're a hero. It may not reach, but at least you'll have tried everything in your bag of tricks before giving up. A Yagi antenna is a narrow beam, highly directional antenna, often around a 25 degree beam width in both H and E planes. Everyone thinks of this antenna as being mounted on a vertical surface so that it points to another building across the street, perhaps. This could be for a point-to-point -point bridge connection as a type of wireless WAN link. Or you could mount it on a wall and point it down a long hallway, aisle, or a row in a warehouse. But does it have to be mounted that way? Of course not. Maybe there's some outdoor courtyard and the historical society for this important building doesn't want an ugly antenna mounted where everyone can see it. You might be able to go up three or four floors and mount a Yagi antenna pointed down toward the courtyard. These are just some of the examples thinking creatively about WLAN solutions. Use your understanding of how antennas radiate energy to creatively solve the unique situations that you may run into. Let's take a break. In our next session, we'll talk about discovering and connecting to WLANs. Let's take an opportunity to check our knowledge of some key concepts from the material covered so far. Submit your answers to the following questions and use the Continue button to move forward.